Come thou long expected Jesus. This is the song that we're reflecting upon today here in the season of Advent. Uh, it's, it's not just a song though, it's also a prayer. And it's a prayer that God's people have been sending up to him for many, many years. God's people long, long ago, and it's even a prayer that God's people today, like you and me, it's a prayer that we are praying as well. And it kind of, you know, it defines who we are as we pray this prayer, come thou long expected Jesus, because we recognize that all is not right with the world. Is that breaking news, right? All is not right with the world. All is not right in me or in you, right? We feel our own sin and our brokenness, the guilt that we have. But we also know that all is not right just in the wider world. This brokenness of sin runs so deep throughout everything. We feel it, it afflicts us, it troubles us, and so feeling the, the, what's wrong on the inside and what's wrong on the outside, what can we do but cry out to God with this prayer, come thou long expected Jesus? Because we have realized that the hope is not within us, the hope comes from outside of us, we direct that to God and we reflect upon what he has promised to do and how he has carried those things out, how he keeps his promises, he fulfills what he has promised. So that, that's what unites us here with people from long ago and even people that are still to come. We're all God's people and we all pray the prayer, come thou long expected Jesus. Now, in, uh, in, in olden days, uh, people knew that there was a savior that was going to be born, right? But they didn't know his name yet, right? We, we, know, we can call him by his name, Jesus. Uh, do you guys know what the name Jesus means, though? Anybody? Did, did someone say God with us? God saves? Ding, 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 ding. God saves, yeah. Savior, the Lord saves, literally is what Jesus means. You know, it's actually the the Hebrew name like Yeshua which is Joshua so if your name is Joshua you know you, you don't get too big of an ego but your name means you know the Lord saves Savior but, but we can we can cry out you know come thou long expected Jesus the Savior God save us when we say that the same way that people have been doing this for a long long time and I, I think about it you know I, I just I love this connection that we have to God's people from long ago um, across time, across space, and um, I, I think about, you know, like in our families, we'll say, in our families, e even now, we, we talk about like our hopes and our dreams, and we talk about our problems, and the things that are wrong, and the things that we wish, you know, we, we, I wish things were this way, and we, and we do that in a lot of different spaces. I know maybe we do that around the dinner table, uh, but, but I want you to imagine these families among God's people, long ago, not that much different than us here today. I want you to imagine just right before bedtime, right? Maybe you have kids or, or you, remember, you remember when you had kids and like you're, you're talking amongst yourself, maybe having family devotion time and you're talking about big, deep things and, and you're thinking about what God is doing and where God is present. And what did God say that he was gonna do for us? You remember his words and his promises. So we're going to trace this throughout history of God's people and bring it all the way full circle to today and think about God's promises and how we keep on praying to him. Now, the, the very first family among God's people, Adam and Eve, right? They were living in perfection. They had not a care in the world, not a complaint to be found in the Garden of Eden, for a little bit of time, right? It's kind of shocking how fast it falls off the rails. Chapter 3 of the Bible. And they fall into sin. And the brokenness of sin takes over everything. They're evicted from the Garden of Eden. And then um, God blesses them with two children, Cain and Abel. And the older one murders the younger one in a fit of jealous rage. And then the older one gets condemned to wander the earth. So poof, now they don't 
really have any children anymore, but God blesses them with more children. And I just imagine Adam and Eve clinging to the promises of God, and they're telling their little kids, you know, they're reminding their kids, they're reminding themselves, right? And they're, they're recounting the promises that God has made, like the one that he said right after they fell into sin, the thing that he said to Satan, but promising a savior, he said, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And you better believe that before they went to sleep at night, they remembered these things. And they quoted this promise from God before they wrapped up with a prayer, come thou long expected Jesus. God's family tree continued for a long, long time. Eventually we get to people like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and you know what? Things were still bad. There was still reason to pray. Lots of scandals in the family, right? They're telling lies. There's betrayal. There's brotherly hatred going on, all this stuff. And yet, in the midst of all of that, they're remembering what God has promised, that he has promised to send a Savior who would make all things right. And I I just imagine... Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and their families before they go to sleep at night they're remembering the promise that God made to Abraham how he said I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed and they know that what that means It's going to be that Savior to come from this family. It's not just going to bless us. It's going to bless everybody. It's going to make everything right. Everything's going to be right when that Savior comes. And they wrap up with a prayer, Come, thou long-expected Jesus. And things got worse even after that. God's people found themselves in Egypt. They went there originally because there was food, right? Joseph was there. He was in power. Pharaoh loved him. Come on and eat. Make this your home. But about 400 years after that, there arose Pharaoh, a Pharaoh who did not know Joseph, did not much care what Joseph had done for the Egyptian people, and he enslaved the people of Israel. And things were really bad. They didn't know how they were going to get out of this one. The only thing that they could think of was the promises of God. And so they cried out to him. The people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to God. And God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God saw the people of Israel And God knew. And they reflected upon those promises that God had made, that he would give them a land that would be theirs forever, and that he would send that Savior, he would make of them a great nation. And so again, as they went to sleep in slavery, they prayed, come thou long-expected Jesus. And decades later, Israelite families were wandering in the wilderness. And they were ungrateful, and they were complaining, and they were grumbling about everything. But the ones who remembered told their kids before bedtime about what God had done when he heard their groaning in slavery, how he had sent Moses, the great prophet, to rescue them. And how he had brought them out of the land of Egypt and they thought they were going to get away and then, whoa, there's a bunch of water in front of us. What are we going to do? Whoa, there's a big army behind us. What are we going to do? And how God told them through Moses what he was going to do. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent. Just stand there. I'm going to take care of this. And they remembered these things as they wandered around. They remembered how these words from God and these promises and the fact that he was going to send a savior, a deliverer to them, how those words applied just as much right then as they did back when they were in the moment of sheer terror between the army and the water. And they prayed again to God because they know he's the source of all good things. They said, come, thou long-expected Jesus. 
And eventually God brought them into the promised land and everything was perfect. No, it wasn't. They still felt the brokenness of this world. They felt the brokenness of their own sin because they just couldn't stay faithful to God. They didn't want to listen to him. They felt entitled to all that they had. God was faithful to them and they had a lot of trouble with it. And so God warned them, if you're not faithful in the land, you're gonna be evicted again, just like you were from the garden. And so there was a lot of uneasiness, even as they were winning victory after victory as Joshua was leading them. But they wondered, oh, how is God gonna set things right? And they remembered the words of the great Moses how he told them right before he died, right when they were on the cusp of the promised land, they remembered the words that Moses said to them to point them again to the Savior. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. And they thought, wow, this guy's gonna be better than the great Moses. And they focused on the coming of that great prophet, that Savior, and they prayed, come, thou long-expected Jesus. And they gained a strong foothold in the land. They conquered it, they subdued it, they, subdued it. they, they set up a kingdom, they had kings. And the kings were not all that they hoped they would be. In fact, they kept getting worse and worse and straying farther and farther away from God and the people, and the majority of the people were listening less and less to God and chasing after other gods. And the, the faithful remnant were starting to be worried. I think we're, I don't, I don't know if this kingly line is gonna last for very much longer. God's gonna punish us. But they held on to the promise that God made to the beloved David that king who was after God's own heart, as God promised him, talking about a son of his, he shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And they longed for this king to lead them. And so they prayed, come thou long expected Jesus. But as you might imagine how this story is going, it kept getting worse and worse and worse. And God sent prophet after prophet after prophet to warn the people. They told them, okay, this has gone far enough now. Judgment upon your sin is coming. You're gonna go into exile. A foreign nation is gonna come and conquer you and destroy the temple and lead you away from your home for a time. Because the thing about the prophets was God gave them a vision to look off into the future and they saw a lot of dark storm clouds brewing and they described those and told them to the people, exile, violence, warfare is coming, judgment upon your sin. But they also were given to see a faint glimmer of light off in the distance. And they told the people about these things too. Because these glimmers of light were reminders of the promises of God in the big picture that even though he would be angry for a time over sin, that he would restore them and that he would send hope in the form of a savior. And so these families, as they were lying awake at night, as they were getting their kids to bed, they would be worried about all manner of things, but they latched on to especially some words from the prophet Isaiah whom they had grown to love, even though most of the stuff he said was tough to hear, he had a few rare occasional things of good news. And they remembered things like, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned. And they rejoiced knowing that the judgment had an end to it. It had an end point and that they would be forgiven for all of their sins. They would be restored one day. And parents would remind their children about the Savior, what the Savior would come to do, that he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him 
was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. And they clung in faith to the healing that Jesus, the Savior, would bring from their own guilt of their sin and that how he would heal all the effects of sin. And they looked forward to that day. And they also thought, oh, there's going to be a day when there's going to be some good news preached to us. Because that Savior is going to come and say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. And as they huddled together in captivity, in exile, far away from their homeland, not even knowing if they would come back to that land that they loved in their lifetime, they clung to this word that good news would be shared for them again. And they prayed, Come, thou long expected Jesus. Now, you and I are in an interesting position as God's people here in the present day because we know what happened when that long expected Jesus actually came. We know that he was born, that he lived and suffered and died on the cross to take all the guilt of your sin and my sin, to pay the price for that, to redeem and restore his creation. We know that he rose again from the dead. We know that he is coming again. And now we are God's people living here between the first and the second coming of Jesus. And we are praying the same thing. We, we, don't, we don't need any new material. We can pray the same prayer that God's people have been praying for centuries. Come, thou long expected Jesus. Because we're waiting for him to come again. And on this side of the first coming of Jesus, we also have some new promises, some new words from God's people of the New Testament about what it's like to live waiting for Jesus to come again. Words like from the Apostle Paul. And we can remind ourselves of these words. We can share these words with our children and pass them on. As Paul says, for we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. There's a fellow Lutheran pastor that I follow on Twitter, and every single day, he's, he posts the same exact message. He says, it's another day, come, Lord Jesus. You guys ever thought that before? You ever just woken up and just groaned, sighed, kind of like Paul's talking about? I guess Jesus didn't come during the night. It's another day. Come, Lord Jesus. What a great prayer that is for God's people. To long with eager expectation for Jesus to come back. Because he know, we know what he's coming back to do, right? He's going to set all things right once and for all. What a prayer that is. How right is he going to set them, you might ask. Well, we have a message from St. John about that. Second to last chapter in the Bible, another promise that we can remind ourselves, we can say it again and again in our homes. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. What a beautiful hope that is. This is what we're longing for as the Advent people of God. This is what we're praying for. 
Now here, as, as we're wrapping up, I'm going to invite our praise team to come back up here right now because we're going to sing this song again, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. This is something that we as God's people can be praying fervently every day of our lives. This is what God's people say to him because we know his promises, we know they are sure, and so we pray Come, thou long-expected Jesus. Let's stand and let's sing that. Let's pray that together as God's people in the here and now.